Hey everyone, I hope everything is going well with you. So Python 3.9 is out and on this video I'm going to go over the newest features that they have added compared to Python 3.8. So let's get started. Now you can always go over the Python documentation and have a look in what is new, but I'm going to go over the main features that they have added in Python 3.9. So we don't have time to cover everything, but there are some quite exciting additions that Python 3.9 comes with. So let's go to PyCharm and start. Okay, so I'm going to start with some additions that have been added to dictionaries in Python. So Python 3.9 now supports operators when you want to merge or update two dictionaries. So for example, if you want to have one dictionary that is containing the key of language and version together, you will normally go with something like the following. So let's call our variable merged. And I'm going to make that to be equal to a new dictionary. And I'm going to include whatever is inside the dict1 and dict2. So in a normal way, you can go with double asterisk here and then call your dictionary. So it will be dict1 and then I'm going to write the same thing for dict2. And once I go ahead and try to print the merged variable, you will probably receive the dictionary that is combined with the key of language and then the version. Now Python 3.9 supports a new operator to take that action. So I'm going to comment out those two lines and I'm going to write besides that merged equals to and then I'm going to write here dict1 and then use the pipeline sign and then write dict2. So that will do the same action like we did here. And then I'm going to go down and try to print the merge out. And then you can see that those dictionaries are merged. Now, if you want to update your dictionary with another dictionary, so let's delete everything from here. And I'm going to use the update method of dictionaries. So we are going to update dictionary1 with dictionary2. So it will be dict1.update. And then I will pass in the dict2. And then once I go ahead and print the dict1, you will see that this dictionary1 is updated with all the keys and values of dictionary2. Now, Python 3.9 replaces this with the following operator. So it will be dict1, and then you will use pipeline and then the equal sign, and right here the dictionary that you want to update with. So it will be dict1, pipeline, and then equal sign to dict2. And now I'm going to print dict1 again. And then you can see that the result is quite same. So this is also something new with Python 3.9 that you can definitely use. Great. So if we talk about strings, Python 3.9 has two new methods that you can apply for your strings. Now in the following example, I'm having a list of items, but you can see that all of the items are starting with a kind of a prefix, which is it dash. Now you have a new method in Python 3.9 that is called clean prefix and then clean suffix. Now I'm going to show off how the clean prefix works. So my goal in that case will be to clean the IT dash for every word in the items. Now normally you will go with something like the following. So we will iterate over our items and I will search for something like if item dot starts with and then we will write here it dash so i'm checking if the item string starts with that prefix and if it is then i'm going to use a new variable here and call it item replaced so i will make that to be equal to item dot replace and then i will replace this it dash with an empty string and then once I go ahead and try to print the item replaced variable, then I will probably get the result. Now you can also do that with string indexing, but I am showing you the two old fashioned ways that you can do that. Now, besides all those lines, you can go with something like item dot remove prefix and then put in as the argument, the prefix that you want to delete. So I'm going to make that to be equal to item without 
prefix, something like that. You can use a shortened variable name for this, but I'm just doing that for example reasons. And I'm going to print the item without prefix. And once I go ahead and print the results, you see that there are the same. So you can use the remove prefix for this kind of reasons. And if we want to use the remove suffix, this will be the same behavior as well. So let me clean everything here and paste new code that will deal with suffix deletion. Now I will paste here an example where you want to delete the latest character of each of the list of words. So we have this list here and you can see that I stored the character s as a suffix variable. Now this is not a convention or something because I just thought that it makes sense to call it suffix. And then I go and iterate over my plurals and then I check for n's width. And then I put here as argument the suffix itself. And again, I'm replacing this with nothing. So if I print that out, the result is quite great. But here you can go ahead and change this into remove suffix. And then as the argument for sure, you will provide the S letter, which is stored inside the suffix variable. Now the results will be the same. But the point is, you save here the condition of if plural ends with suffix. So let me delete this condition and show you that this is going to work as well. So if I go ahead and run that out, the result is quite great. Now, one more point here about those functions which are remove suffix and prefix. Basically, if the suffix that you are trying to remove is not existing inside the word that you check, it is going to return you back the string as it is. Now, if I press Ctrl B once I mark this function here, basically I'm going inside what this function includes. And then you can see that there is a documentation string that says to us, returns the string with the given suffix string, removed if present. So you can also see here if the string ends with the suffix string, and that suffix is not empty, it returns the string itself. So you can see that by this line, return a copy of the original string. So if we want to test that out, so I'm going to remove the S from book, okay? And I'm going to add here booked like this. And then if I run our program again, you can see that it returns the word as it is and not an exception or something in that kind. So this is a behavior that you want to know as well. Okay, so in this version of Python, there is a new special library which is called Zone Info. Now, Zone Info allows you to gather time information about certain zones around the world. And it also has a database behind the scenes with all the time zones around the world that is being keep synchronized. Now, those time zones are being set by a worldwide organization that sets those kind of standards, which is very known as IANA. Now, IANA stands for Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, and it is a standards organization which they are responsible for the allocation of globally unique numbers like IP addresses and ports that are used in different internet protocols. And it is a quite nice feature by Python to allow us to have all the zone infos synchronized with this organization. Okay, so let's see how we can use it. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to print all the time zones in the world. So it will be zone info dot available time zones. Now you have to call it as a method in order to list all the available time zones. But now if I go ahead and run that out, you can see that it just returns me set and that is it. So what that means, it means that these available time zones are not synchronized with the global database that I talked about. And I'm going to prove this by printing the length of this set. As you can see, it is zero. Now, the way you can fill in the information is by pip installing some special library that will do this job for you. Now, in order to prevent collision in my system interpreters, I'm going to go to file in PyCharm and I'm going to install this library manually. So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to search for settings. 
and then right here you want to search for your project file i mean for your project folder name and then you want to go to your python interpreter and you want to make sure that it is pointed in python 3.9 and then you can press the plus sign here and you can go here and search tz data okay so if you go ahead and install this package basically this action is equal to pip install tz data okay so it is quite great and now i will allow myself to close that out as i see the alert of installation being finished and now i can try to print this line again and you can see that the result is quite different now the number you see here might be different by the time you try out and print the length of the available time zones because as i said this database is being keep synchronized all the time now if you want to list all the available time zones we can go with a for loop so it will be for time zone in zone info dot available time zones and I'm going to print down here time zone and once I do that you can see that we receive back all the time zones around the world now it probably makes sense to being aware of what time is it right now in one of the time zones that are available in this list so I'm going to show an example with the United States Pacific and I'm going to minimize my terminal and take some new actions here so in order to be aware of what time is it right now in a specific time zone we have to import one more library which is called datetime and you might be familiar with this library and down here i'm going to get rid of my for loop and i'm going to create a new instance from that zone info library so i will go ahead and create a new variable which is called time zone one and I'm going to search for the class that is called zone info that is existing inside the zone info library and make sure that you capitalize the class over here and once I have done that I have to search for the now function inside that date time and once I have done that it makes sense to pass here some information about the time zone that we are searching information about it so I will go here and I will paste the time zone that I want to gather some information about it so it will be United States slash Pacific and I'm going to go down here and print the current time from the date time library so it will be something like date time dot date time again and then dot now but this function right here is going to print the time zone in my location so it will be 1241 for now but if i go ahead and provide here some new information and i pass in here tz equals to which stands for the shortened version of time zone and i need to pass here the instance of the zone info that i have created so i will pass in here time zone one and now once i go ahead and execute our program you can see that the us slash pacific time zone is 10 hours behind my location okay so this is a nice library that will allow you to bring this kind of information and the fact that this library stores updated information about all the time zones around the world is quite great all right so i hope you liked this video and i hope you learned something new about the newest release of python and for sure if you want to have a deeper look in what is new with that version you can search that up in the python official documentation and i hope to see you in my next upload don't forget to crack the subscribe button and also like this video i will see you in my next upload